curriculum planning for understanding uh, inside the unit planner? The uh, curriculum planning for understanding uh, format in the planner reflects a quote backward design approach to curriculum planning and it features several important elements. Uh, one is identifying established goals which would come from Australian national curriculum or from states that have specified learning outcomes. Uh, established goals can also be from individual schools such as schools with a religious affiliation. They typically have goals specific to their campus. But going beyond established goals, the CPU model says let's identify the important ideas that are most worth understanding. And let's identify and frame those through essential questions. The essential questions are meant to help teachers uncover the content and engage students in really thinking about its import. There's also a section in the planner for more discrete and specific knowledge and skill objectives, uh, what we want students to know and be able to do at the conclusion of a unit. So this is in stage one of backward design, and we contend that these are really the important elements uh, in curriculum planning. They, they establish our desired results. The planner also has a section on assessment. Uh, this is stage two. In stage two, we think about evidence, uh, given the goals that we've identified. The evidence for understanding involves assessments that require students to perform with their knowledge to show they really understand and can use it. And so we have a category in the planner for performance assessments that really give us evidence of understanding. We also have a category of other evidence, and this can take the form of a quiz, a test, a skill check, an observation, uh, other evidence that teachers gather to gauge student learning given the outcomes or results thereafter. Stage three of backward design then is the teaching plan. This is where we develop our lessons, lay out the activities in sequence, and decide what resources will support learning uh, in the journey toward desired results. The planner reflects the three stages of backward design, and thus it becomes a really helpful tool for teachers as they think through curriculum plans. In using the planner, teachers are reminded of the logic of backward design and help to plan with clear priorities, mindful of assessment evidence, uh, and not just planning activities or covering a textbook. So if a teacher or a school is familiar with your, your wider body of work, how will they find the unit planner? Uh, the unit planner really reflects uh, the planning model that Grant Wiggins and I have endorsed uh, over the years. Uh, they will see it as a tool that supports their understanding uh, of backward design. They'll see a three-stage model reflected in the software. Uh, so the planner embodies the ideas that they know and puts those ideas into a very practical planning tool. How does Edutex Unit Planner with the Curriculum Planning for Understanding configuration help teachers and schools? Uh, the EduTech Planner has several really significant virtues. I'm going to start at the teacher level. Teachers need to plan their teaching. The planner is not only a tool to support their planning, but it models the very thinking that we want teachers to consider as they plan. What we find is when teachers use an intelligent tool like the planner, it rubs off on their thinking. Uh, and so the templates that they have electronically available to them through the Edutech Planner become a mental template for their thinking. And they start thinking about curriculum priorities. They think about appropriate assessment evidence. They think about creating authentic tasks around the content, forming essential questions to engage students with the content. And then back, backing out of that, formulate a teaching plan that's with that end in mind. A second virtue of the planner is that it's electronic, so that teachers can get initial ideas out. When they teach the unit, invariably they'll make refinements for next year, and they can put those right in the planner. So this is an efficient way of 
keeping track of unit plans and always and immediately revising them when new ideas or changes uh, are needed. Third benefit of the planner uh, occurs with group planning, that when a pair of teachers or a team of teachers have the opportunity to collaborate, they can work together using the same format and framework. Often uh, ideas are enhanced when you can work with other people, and so the planner allows that to occur. Significantly, because it's electronic in form, uh, teachers don't have to physically be together to do their planning. And so it's possible that if you and I are teaching a unit in concert, uh, we can work on our plans uh, Sunday evening or Monday at lunch or whenever we would normally do our planning, and we would have access to each other's ideas uh, summarized in a final form on the planner. The planner, in my view, has even greater strengths when we start thinking about it as a school-wide tool. That unit planning might be thought of as building blocks, but the building blocks are part of a larger structure. To use a building analogy, if a unit plan is like a room in a building, we need a blueprint for the whole building such that the rooms that are being built are coherent and connected. So the planner serves a, a broader function for helping teachers see the, the rooms that other teachers are building and helps school leaders and team leaders and program chair people plot out a more coherent curriculum across the grades by looking at how the building blocks or the rooms uh, fit into a larger uh, house or a larger blueprint. I think that the planner has enormous potential to serve as a coordinating tool to ensure that the curriculum is coherent and connected across the grades. We need to see what other teachers are doing and see how our work fits in and complements uh, their work uh, if we want to have a, a truly coherent curriculum within a school. The reports that the planner provides to school leaders and team leaders enables us to do vertical alignment of the curriculum, something that is really crucial. A final benefit of the planner extends beyond the school. And here's the potential. All or most educators in Australia are obligated to the national curriculum. And yet, what I see in my travels is that often planning around the national curriculum is done individually, teacher by teacher, or team by team within a school, or even school by school. Because we're working toward the same outcomes, it just makes sense to work smarter. And so the potential for schools to share curriculum plans and curriculum resources and curriculum maps all aligned to the national curriculum is extraordinary. We have the intelligence and experience to work smarter, but now we have a technology tool to enable us to really work smarter and nationally. So here's my vision. A new teacher comes into your school, brand new to teaching, could have access a click away to well-developed, excellent unit plans developed by experienced teachers from all over Australia tied to the national curriculum. This would enable that beginning teacher to do high quality teaching even as they're understanding and learning about the Australian curriculum. The chance to share model unit plans nationally uh, will do nothing but significantly improve the quality of teaching and learning. It's a way of working smarter, not harder. Uh, Edutech Planner provides that vehicle. So what evidence do you have from your experience that uh, tools like the unit planner and the backwards planning um, actually impact what's happening in the classroom, real teaching and learning? I'm going to answer this in two ways. The first way is just incorporating the ideas of teaching and assessing for understanding and planning accordingly. There's a growing body of research from cognitive psychology and increasingly from neuroscience about the importance of engaging students in thinking deeply about content not just covering isolated facts in a rote way, 
and also the importance of giving them opportunities, regular opportunities, to use their knowledge in meaningful ways, in authentic situations, so that they see the relevance of the knowledge and skills they're using and have a chance to really understand it through application. In the neurosciences, they're describing the importance of cultivating the executive functions of the brain. This is where the higher order learning takes place, and it's different than rote learning that occurs in a more primitive uh, region of the brain. Arguably, in today's modern world, we need people who are able to think, to apply their knowledge to new and unpredictable situations, and that's the very kind of learning that planning for understanding, teaching for understanding, assessing for understanding promotes. The alternative is rote learning, where students can learn the facts and skills in an isolated way, but they're not able to transfer their learning if they don't understand it. And that's what the world today demands. So one of the benefits of planning for understanding, and the ideas incorporated into the planner, uh, remind us to teach and assess for understanding and transfer and to plan backward from those goals. Of course, students will acquire knowledge and skills along the way, but they're doing it in a more authentic and meaningful way. Here's an analogy with athletics that every coach and player knows in sports like soccer, basketball, and Australian rules football, and lacrosse, and hockey that there are basic skills to be acquired to play the game. And a lot of practice is working on the skills. Skills are unquestionably important. There's also things you have to know, like rules of the game. But just knowing rules of the game or being skilled in isolated um, performance uh, areas doesn't ensure that you or your teammates will be effective in the game. The game is different than practice. The game is the ultimate transfer task. You have to take everything you've learned in practice, knowledge, skills, strategy, and conditioning, and apply them in an authentic situation. I think that for too many students in too many classrooms, school is an endless series of sideline drills in practice with few opportunities to ever play the game. Curriculum Planning for Understanding says, let's be clear about the game. Why are we teaching this knowledge and these skills? What do we want students to be able to do with their knowledge and skills in an authentic, game-like situation? And then we plan backward from that to practice the skills needed, but always with the game in mind. I've often wondered how many players on sports teams would be willing to endure the rigors of practice and the tedium of drills and the agony of conditioning if they weren't trying to get better for the game. But in schools, many students don't know what the game is. They're just dutifully going through maths lessons or reading a textbook in history, but there's often no game in sight. And we wonder why student motivation often wanes as kids go through school. So the importance of curriculum planning for understanding and following the ideas in the planner is to help teachers first and then students second understand the game, why we're learning what we're doing, learning and how it can be most effectively applied in a meaningful, relevant situation. And these factors influence student motivation and